justifying making the improvements. But one of the things you need to keep in mind, and we get this all the time, is uh, half measures don't produce half results. Um, I've done a number of studies, particularly on belt cleaning. You know, we, we say, well, we got so much in the budget, can't you just throw one on? Well, you don't reduce the carry back by half. You reduce it by maybe 25% by putting one on. Well, if you put two or three on, then you're really solving the problem. So convincing people of, of those things, um, overcoming uh, the maintenance and operating myths that have been out there for decades about how to operate and maintain systems, those are often difficult. Uh, a lot of times uh, you put band-aids on things and it seems to work, but nobody goes back and tries to figure out well, why did this work and will it apply to other conveyors? Instead, it just somehow gets written in your standard corporate specs that uh, this is the way we do it. Uh, old Joe, 35 years ago, he put one of these on conveyor two, but boy, did it work. Um, we like to approach it more and more from an engineering standpoint. And certainly with uh, design programs are out there and the shoot design programs, you have a lot better shot at uh, an effective uh, engineering control and being your discharge and receiving shoots. Now, most corporations are gonna go out for bid, low bid wins, that's buying on price. And usually your justification is you go to the boss and say, hey, you know, if, if we put a couple more belt cleaners in, we can probably get rid of one or two cleanup guys. <clears throat> so the savings decided to buy the price of the belt cleaners is the return on investment. No real thought about additional maintenance. Uh, quite often, uh, I find that uh, conveyor maintenance staffs are already understaffed. And if you're adding additional equipment to control dust and you don't add maintenance hours, um, you're fighting a losing battle. So that's got to be included in the return on investment. And then your fabricator, if he's going to win the low bid, he's only meeting the minimum standards, design and safety standards. He's only providing the minimum quality steel and belt. Um, a lot of, of uh, horror stories out there on, on buying cheap belt. And he's going to run the belt as fast as he can and load it 100% according to SEMA design calculations. Now, when we say 100%, we don't mean edge to edge. Every design approach allows a free, free belt edge to handle the <clears throat> sag. Uh, it's created when you get out of the load zone and your eyebrows are spaced farther apart. You don't want product rolling off the belt. So basically, you had a hell of a price, but you now you've got a lifetime of problems. And more than likely, um, you're loading on the transition. You don't have space to solve problems in the future. You, you put a minimum size head shoe. Um, and you just, you just bought yourself a whole basket full of problems. On the other hand, if you can justify doing it right the first time, that's called life cycle uh, foster. And it's based on a series of cash flows over time, usually five to seven years. We usually uh, use five to seven because that's about how long a uh, transfer point goes without needing major rebound. What you can do is you can lay out your savings every year, your costs every year, you can change those. And then you take the company's cost of money and essentially you pull all that back into today's dollars, uh, essentially accounting for inflation. And, that, and then you subtract the cost of the original installation, that's your net cash flow. This is what the corporate accountants are looking at. This is the same. Uh, approach they use. It's called net present value and it's an Excel function. So if you type in equals NPV, you'll get this. Neat thing about this is you can play around with it. You can change your savings. You can change your costs. You can anticipate the questions your boss has. He might say, well, we really need three belt cleaners. What if we just put two and plug it in and you can see the results. You're going to get <clears throat> 
industry best practices this way because you're looking at life cycle, you're going to be looking at the latest equipment with the longest life on the market. Your standards, they develop over time. Sometimes it takes 10, 20 years to change. That industrial ventilation handbook hasn't changed much since the 1940s, for example. You get the right quality equipment for the job. You don't load it fully, so you don't have spillage when you're surge loading. You run your belts a little wider and slower. And as I said, you can think ahead when you're buying a new conveyor. What, what problems might I have that I need to design in uh, extra room or pre-mount my flow aid device mounting devices? 